Isaiah chapter 29 Woe to you, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David settled. Add year to year and let your cycle of festivals go on. Yet I will besiege Ariel. She will mourn and lament. She will be to me like an altar hearth. I will encamp against you on all sides. I will encircle you with towers and set up my siege works against you. Brought low, you will speak from the ground. Your speech will mumble out of the dust. Your voice will come ghost-like from the earth. Out of the dust your speech will whisper. But your many enemies will become like fine dust, the ruthless hordes like blown chaff. Suddenly, in an instant, the Lord Almighty will come, with thunder and earthquake and great noise, with whirlwind and tempest and flames of a devouring fire. Then the hordes of all the nations that fight against Ariel, that attack her and her fortress and besiege her, will be as it is with a dream, with a vision in the night, as when a hungry person dreams of eating but awakens hungry still as when a thirsty person dreams of drinking, but awakens faint and thirsty still. So will it be with the hordes of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion. Be stunned and amazed. Blind yourselves and be sightless. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep, he has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. For you, this whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read, and say, Read this, please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read, and say, Read this, please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore once more I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us, who will know? You turn things upside down, as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, You did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, You know nothing? In a very short time will not Lebanon be turned into a fertile field, and the fertile field seem like a forest. In that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. Once more the humble will rejoice in the Lord, the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The ruthless will vanish, the mockers will disappear and all who have an eye for evil will be cut down. Those who with a word make someone out to be guilty, who ensnare the defender in court and with false testimony deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore this is what the Lord who redeemed Abraham says to the descendants of Jacob, No longer will Jacob be ashamed, no longer will their faces grow pale, when they see among them their children, the work of my hands, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Those who are wayward in spirit will gain understanding. Those who complain will accept instruction. Isaiah chapter 30 Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, 
forming an alliance but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, who look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade for refuge. But Pharaoh's protection will be to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. Though they have officials in Zoan, and their envoys have arrived in Hanes, everyone will be put to shame because of a people useless to them, who bring neither help nor advantage, but only shame and disgrace. A Prophecy Concerning the Animals of the Negev Through a land of hardship and distress, of lions and lionesses, of adders and darting snakes, the envoys carry their riches on donkeys' backs, their treasures on the humps of camels, to that unprofitable nation, to Egypt, whose help is utterly useless. Therefore I call her Rahab the Do-Nothing. Go now, write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll, that for the days to come it may be an everlasting witness. For these are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, See no more visions, and to the prophets, Give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things, prophesy illusions. Leave this way, get off this path, and stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. Therefore this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Because you have rejected this message, relied on oppression, and depended on deceit, this sin will become for you like a high wall, cracked and bulging, that collapses suddenly in an instant. It will break in pieces like pottery, shattered so mercilessly that among its pieces not a fragment will be found for taking coals from a hearth or scooping water out of a cistern. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. You said, No, we will flee on horses. Therefore you will flee. You said, We will ride off on swift horses. Therefore your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five you will all flee away till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountain top, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore he will rise up to show you compassion, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. People of Zion, who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, Away with you. He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground, and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day your cattle will graze in broad meadows, the oxen and donkeys that work the soil, will eat fodder and mash, spread out with fork and shovel. In the day of great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain and every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted. See, the name of the Lord comes from afar, 
with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath, and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the peoples a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing as on the night you celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people playing pipes go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. The Lord will cause people to hear his majestic voice and will make them see his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire, with cloudburst, thunderstorm and hail. The voice of the Lord will shatter Assyria. With his rod he will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on them, with his punishing club, will be to the music of tambourines and harps, as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm. Topheth has long been prepared. It has been made ready for the king. Its fire pit has been made deep and wide, with an abundance of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of burning sulphur, sets it ablaze. Isaiah chapter 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from the Lord. Yet he too is wise and can bring disaster. He does not take back his words. He will rise up against that wicked nation, against those who help evildoers. But the Egyptians are mere mortals and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, those who help will stumble. Those who are helped will fall. All will perish together. This is what the Lord says to me. As a lion growls, a great lion over its prey. And though a whole band of shepherds is called together against it, it is not frightened by their shouts or disturbed by their clamor. So the Lord Almighty will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and on its heights. Like birds hovering overhead, the Lord Almighty will shield Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and will rescue it. Return, you Israelites, to the one you have so greatly revolted against. For in that day every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold your sinful hands have made. Assyria will fall by no human sword. A sword not of mortals will devour them. They will flee before the sword, and their young men will be put to forced labor. Their stronghold will fall because of terror. At the sight of the battle standard, their commanders will panic declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. To Timothy chapter 3 But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women, who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Yanas and Yambres opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds, who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far. 
because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Psalm 70 Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, Aha! Aha! Turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you Rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, The Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. Proverbs chapter 19 Better the poor whose way of life is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Wealth attracts many friends, but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. The poor are shunned by all their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favour is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep, and the shiftless go hungry. Whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them, and you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. 
The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker, and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning, and they will gain knowledge. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers, and beatings for the backs of fools.